What up everybody, it's your girl July from Kickback Couture and today I'm going to do a full breakdown of my entire template. So previously I would just talk about the drum section because everything else would change constantly as far as all of everything else you always see and people would complain about how they, they don't know what my full template is. So I'm going to show you and I'm going to build it from scratch. So going to click on file new from template and I'm going to create a blocks template. I interrupt this broadcast to show you really quick how to save your template properly so that it loads up each time you open reason. I want to do this first just in case you don't care what my template is. So I'm on a Mac and the reason folder is in the music folder in this case. I believe it's the same on a Windows. So in the music folder I'm going to click on reason template songs and all of my templates are here my template is called oomph test why i don't know i never changed the name of it so i saved my template in this folder if you save it somewhere else simply drag it into the folder called template songs now when i come to reason and i come to new from template it will show my template oomph test here now another thing that you might want to do is come to your preferences down here it says default song and you want to have your template set up here instead of an empty rack so we do template and umph test gonna open up that folder gonna grab that select it and you have your template opening up every time you open reason and I picked blocks because it is the most simple and there's not too much to delete or change in order to build mine from scratch so I'm going to get rid of those, which is basically in place for sequencing. We could leave it, but I'm going to change it later. So I'm just going to get rid of it. So I'm going to start in the rack. And to the left, we see the master section. And to the right, we see empty, empty rack. So the first thing I do is create an, I create an instrument. And it's going to be grain and I drag it to the left because I like to work from left to right and I'm gonna change it to a different color so this grain is gonna house my 808 so I'm gonna pick burgundy and I'm gonna change the name on this piece of tape here on the grain to 808 and that will also correlate to the name on the mix channel the next thing I'm gonna do is click on this drop down arrow show insert effects I'm gonna put grain inside of it it's not gonna change any routing it's just a a preference of mine the next thing I do is find the 808 that I would like to put in grain as my template so I don't have to go searching for a sample every time I can just lay down my 808 and find the sample later so I'm gonna go into my drum kits and find an 808 I want to use. This is the Boom Lightyear drum kit. It looks like this. Sorry if you can hear that. There are cats fighting outside of my door. I'm going to use this arcade 808 here. And I'm going to drag this out so that I can play the full sample. I'm gonna bring my decay all the way up and my attack all the way down so that it plays normally. I'm gonna go ahead and set the key. So I can now play it where it needs to be when I wanna load it up. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is set this to one shot. I'm going to change the algorithm to tape so that it time stretches correctly. And that is all I'm going to do with this 808. Now we did see this name changed. Once we drag grain in, just gonna change that again. The next thing I do is add my drums. Now this is my drum sequencer template tutorial basically. So if you haven't seen that already, you can go check it out up here but either way i'm gonna go explain it anyways so i'm gonna create umph if you do not own umph 
I suggest you try it out. If you don't want to try it out, you don't have the money. I have tutorials on how to set up a drum setup for Red Drum as well as Kong and also in NXTs. You can also check those out. I'll drop those, I'll throw those up above in the cards so you can check those out whenever you please. So I'm gonna go with Oomph Retro Beats. Next thing I'm gonna do is grab my drum sequencer player and I'm going to name all of my drums where they would be placed in the drum sequencer. Kick, snare, snare two, clap, hi-hat. Open hi-hat, or open hat, and then I have two percussion sounds. All right, now the next thing I would do is drag in drums into umph so that once I start making my beat everything is there for me. So I'm gonna grab my favorite kick out of Spider Demon. This is the cage kick. I'm gonna put it here. Next I have a snare so I'm gonna grab a snare and that will be let's go ahead and grab the dissect snare and I'm gonna grab the kilo snare for snare two. Going back out into Raven Wings, I'm gonna grab a clap and let's go with this leap clap here. Then I'm going to grab a hi hat. Still in Raven Wings, I'm gonna grab the accept hi hat and I need an open hat. So let's go back out. Open hats. Whoops. Gonna grab this one. And then I need two percussion sounds. So let's see what we have. Gonna choose this bop perk. And then I'm gonna go into Boom Lightyear and grab another percussion sound from here I'm gonna go with this triangle all right so that is everything set up for that uh, the last thing I need to do for this drum setup is create mix channels so that I can have each drum on its separate channel in relation to the mixer so so far we have all of the drums summed up into this umph mix channel and I want them all separate so I'm going to create mix channels and I'm gonna duplicate this seven times so that I have a total of eight for all eight of my drums. I'm gonna hold down Command D on a Mac. And now I have eight mix channels. And I'm going to hit Tab to flip to the back of the rack. And now I'm going to start connecting these. So this is the first drum down here. This is the second drum. Third fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. All right, awesome. Now when I play these drums, they will all come out of separate mix channels. Now I need to name them. I'm gonna change the color to burgundy to match the 808. I label all of my low end like drum percussive sounds and burgundy so this is my kick bring the mic a little closer this is my snare snare two snare three whoops no snare three uh clap Hi hat. Open hat. 
percussion one and perk two so that is my drum setup as far as oomph goes what i also do is add two more instances of drums not that uh, i add an nnxt two nnxts actually so i'm going to come up to reason devices nnxt advanced sampler and i duplicate that and i have a second open hi-hat so that i can create melodic instances of an open hi-hat if i want to use it so open hat 2 and I also do hi hat 2 so that I can sequence it in the sequencer and implement pitch changes in time in the sequencer and not have to do it with an LFO I can control specifically where it's going without crazy automation and I can also play it on my keyboard so gonna grab an open hat another open hat gonna go back into spider demon Gonna grab the coordinate open hi hat and I'm going to right click and set the root notes from pitch detection so that it plays at the root note and when I want to play it melodically like so there we go it plays in key all right gonna drag this out a little bit so that it goes lower down to C0 and then I am going to find my second hi-hat and I'm going to choose a hi-hat from Raven Wings the drugs hi-hat I like it because it's low and it adds like a juxtaposition to the hi-hat the first hi-hat which is accept so do that set the root notes from pitch detection and it's all the way up there no biggie and then I can sequence this however I would like to I must move up perfect all right now that sums it up for my drum section as far as my immediate template goes the next part is my melody section the first thing I do is create a Kong and I choose a backdrop for it so right click select backdrop and I have three different packs of backdrops which you can grab on my website they look like this if you happen to be interested I'm gonna go ahead and grab the it needs to be a Kong so I didn't mean to grab the combinator one uh, let's actually go with the Joker on this one. The Joker, Kong, and awesome. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick it, pick the backdrop for it when it's folded. Kong folded. All right, now this is typically my sample holder. Now these days, I usually use Serato for my samples or the sequencer itself. If you want to see videos on those, I also have videos on those as well. Um, I will drop those in the description if I run out of space or else they'll be up in the cards area. So what I do with this is turn it, let's go ahead and turn it purple. Now I put it on Rex, Nurse Rex Loop Player and I put it on Trunk Trig Mode, Chunk Trig Mode so that when I get my sample, I can play it in chunks. And if you wanna know how to use the Kong to play your samples, you can check out this video up above. The next thing I do is add, I add an ID8, but before that, I get a lot of questions about the lights that I have in my setup. So that is a utility made by, is it a utility? Sit down. Anything? Thing. Okay, it's it's called WBL. All right, if you can't find it, search for it. I think it's an instrument then. 
yeah so it's an instrument because it takes midi duh all right cool so i add about two maybe three of these and i'll just call it lights all right and now we need to make this work so in order to make this work you will see that there are midi uh there are lanes for it in the sequencer so what i want to do with this is put midi into it so i'm gonna go to my drenched by design midi kit and i'm just gonna grab some random midi files head back into the rack and when I hit play, everything lights up. Flip over to the back of the rack and I can set the lights to do different things. So if I want it all to change in a block, flip up this middle switch, this one in the middle. Let's go ahead and flip, see what we can get by flipping it up. Does this have MIDI on it? It does have MIDI on it. Okay, let's turn the loop on that's what happened with that all right so we see that's what we get by flipping the first switch let's flip the third switch on this one and the, the first one nothing all right cool so I'll just play with the switches and you'll get different variations of light shows so after I set up my lights just for inspiration purposes I add an ID8 which is usually always gonna be my beginning sound a piano so I have a sound to start with and I don't have to go digging through presets I can just lay out my melody find the sound preset whether I create it myself whatever that case may be I start with this so I'm gonna name it piano and I'm going to color this let's go with sky blue all right Following that, I create a bus. A bus is a collection of sounds that you route it to. Let's just, I'll show you. Uh, this, <laughs> okay. Um, okay, create mix channel. And this is gonna be. Whoa. Melody group. And I'm gonna change this color to match. All right, awesome. So now I'm going to route this to melody group. So basically a bus is the sum of multiple channels together. So if I had a piano and a lead sound and I wanted them to come out of the same mix channel for purposes of an effect, maybe I wanted the same distortion on both or I wanted to put effectrix or gross beat on both of the sounds without making two separate instances I could bust them together and drop that effect on that bus now what I want to do in order to get this going is create a combinator so I'm gonna right click go to utilities and create a combinator and we see that it already auto routed so I'm gonna hit Control Z and hold down shift when I create that combinator not in effects it's in utilities I'm gonna flip the rack over and I'm gonna route this so if you have trouble figuring out how to route it just look at the other instances of routings and we see that this is going into the input so we're gonna take the combi output and put it into the input here now I'm also going to pick a backdrop for this select backdrop and we were in trap drops volume 3 uh, it says trap crops for whatever reason let's go ahead and hop into 2 and I'm going to go with sonic and now I have my combinator backdrop for my melody group
all right awesome now i usually put something here um something motivational just to keep me and my spirits up so i usually put i can i will I must and let's go ahead and put I am here and now in this case when I want to just add an effect like I said to all of my sounds I just make sure they're all bust here and drop that effect now I do have a video on a effects combinator setup that I've created in the past I no longer do that if you want to know more about the effects combinator setup which I no longer use you can check that out in the video above all right now that sums it up for my melody section I'm gonna go ahead and drag this upwards and move this with it gonna move these lights here and I actually like the black effect so I'm going to set these lights to do the same thing Moving on, I have my master section. Master section is a really simple setup. I've previously done a video of the very first thing in my master section, and it is the stereo imager. It looks like I do need to reset this. So I'm going to right click and reset this device. And then make sure everything is reset in the mixer as well. And it is. Everything on this master section here correlates to this master the master inserts and so on here so just keep in mind that these are interlinked if you don't know much about the mixer I have an entire playlist explaining the mixer so you can check that out as well all right first step let's create a stereo imager I'm gonna go in reason devices M class stereo imager this allows me to toggle my mix back and forth from mono to its original stereo form so in order to set that up I'm going to name this button mono and this will also correlate to this button up here in the mixer the master insert section and I'm going to automate these buttons the low band and the high these knobs the low band and the high knob to change from mono to the original upon clicking on this button so this is button one so low width I'm gonna change this option to button one as well and this is high width and let's see what happens when we press the button now we see it going from mono to wide and we don't want it to go from mono to wide we want it to go from mono to original so when the button is on I want it to be mono so let's Fix those numbers so that it's right. 63 on the minimum, 0 on the max, and we could test that and make sure it works. Alright, there we go. So this is the low band, let's see what happens. Now it's going from white to original. So let's fix that. We need to be at negative 64. And now we see mono to original. So let's go ahead and mirror that for the high band. Change this to zero. And now we can toggle from mono to original. Now there is a problem here. When it's lit up, it's original. So I want it to be lit up when it is mono. So now I have to flip the numbers. So when you're setting this up, make sure that you pay attention to the numbers. Change. Oop. Done now it works correctly gonna go ahead and turn that off the next thing I do is start adding my sins so the first sin I usually create is saturation 
and you can create as many sins if you want as you want again i do have an entire playlist on the mixer channel or the mixer in general so you can check that out these are the sins up here I'm gonna right click create send effect you can also do that by right clicking on the master section itself uh where is it at Oh, right below it, just hit create send effect. So, soft tube saturation knob. If you want an in depth video on mastering, you can also check out this video up here. So, here is my saturation knob. Now, gonna turn it up a bit so that it works when I toggle it on and off for my mix channels which would be up here and I'm gonna make sure that the name is something sensible saturation and I can change it to my taste later on now the next thing I add is reverb and this is a more creative type of routing so i also have a video on this how to use the like hidden effects in kong so i'm going to hold down shift and create a kong and i use the reverb inside of kong again gonna pick a backdrop Why not pick the Legend of Zelda? Kong folded. Awesome. Everything set. All right, flip to the back of the rack and I'm going to click on this drop down arrow. Now we see how this send is connected for the saturation knob. So we're gonna use that same setup for Kong. The audio in is going into effects in one. So we're going to send our audio in into effects in dose two. And we're going to send the main out up to the effects return two. And here in the master effects section, I'm going to pick reverb. Now let's go ahead and test this out and see, make sure that it works. So again, gonna go into the Trench by Design MIDI kit and I'm going to drop something on the ID8. Not there. And let's go ahead and add some reverb. Make sure that everything's working. And it's working perfectly. So from there, let's go ahead and delete this because we no longer need it. And uh, well, not that one. Let's delete this and get rid of that. And we have our reverb in which we can tailor to our needs whenever we want. You do not have to create a Kong reverb. This is just my preference because I like it. It's really simple and it adds just the right amount of depth to my sounds without too much alteration or saturation of the reverb itself. The next thing I add is a loudness meter. And the one I like is created by Flower Audio Loudness. We do have access to these big meters here, but they are in VU, PPM, and peak mode and I prefer to meter in LUFS. If you do not know what that means, check out the mastering video that I mentioned earlier. It will be up in the cards above. So add audio device, utilities, flower audio. And let's go ahead and connect this. So we're gonna drop down, whoops, this hardware interface here. July. And we're looking at this and we see our master out is going here. So I'm going to take the control room out 
and put it into the main inputs. Disconnect this, take this and put it here. And now let's actually add a MIDI file back here under the ID8. And now we can see how loud it is in LUFS. Alright, awesome. So the next thing I do is kind of like extra credit. I set up an alternate metronome because I don't like how the reason metronome sounds. I prefer different ones. So now let's set that up. Robotic Bean MT1 metronome. Let's get this thing working. Now, what we have to do is create a mix channel. Drag this below and put this output into this input. And now we can hear it. So I'm going to name this, just going to erase this metronome. Metrotone. And we can get Ableton Live Sound. Cubase, Logic, or Pro Tools. I prefer the Ableton sound or the Logic one. Gonna go with Ableton. The next thing I do is set it up so that this is controlled by this click button or let's say C because C is the shortcut that controls this but I don't want to use this anymore. So I'm gonna go up to Options and I'm going to click on keyboard control edit mode. You may not be able to see that because of my overlay. And I'm gonna click on this, double click it, then hit C on my keyboard. And now C controls that. Go back up to options and disable keyboard control edit mode. Now it turns it on and off. And it no longer controls this as long as I do not have it lit up. Perfect. And you can also change it to double time if you would like and change the level and the volume and so on. And mess with the beats. Whatever you would like to do, you can do it. So my metronome is set. Going to change the color to graphite. And leave that there. Let's move on to setting up the sequencer and I'm going to make sure that everything is initialized in the rack, in the mixer, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna turn that off, hold down command and fix that. And we're good. Perfect. I'll keep that just in case I need to do another example with it. Now we are in the sequencer and it's a mess kind of depending on how you look at it. I am going to make sure everything is named what it's supposed to be named. So here's the Kong. This is my sampler. And we see that the colors aren't really matching. So I'm going to right click and Switch the color to purple. You can also uh, sort selected device groups or whatever. Um, that will change the, the order in the mixer though. So, track color, purple. All right, cool. Gonna change the color of my transport as well. I do not like that color. It's gonna match the background gonna drag up these lights also change the color of these and then I'm going to collapse these if you hold down 
um, you hold down alt, you can collapse everything. But I just want to collapse these. Alright, cool. So next we have the drums, and we realize that our kick, snare, hi-hat, clap, everything else is missing. So I'm going to go in here, right click, create track for kick, and repeat this step for every drum. Awesome. Now everything is here. And the reason you may want to do this is if you want everything in audio. Now, me personally, I don't do this at all. So I'm going to undo that. That is an option if you want to do that. Now me, I just keep the, the oomph retro track. drums and once I lay out my pattern for example I do have a few um, simple patterns that I have instilled so that I can just get a drum beat going pretty quickly and those are located in my templates drum right here so if I were to use this one or let's say this one I can Send this to the track and hit F8, explode them, and now all of the drums, actually that was a complete wrong file, up here explode this, and now all of the drums are on separate tracks, and I can name them from here. And this would be... kick, snare, so on. But in that case, I don't do that until my drum pattern is done being sequenced. So leave that how it is. Just answering that question just in case you're wondering. Move my instrument up above my drums. Sampler, looks like I have two samplers. That's weird. Okay, one of these must be for the reverb. I think it's this one. I'm just going to delete the track. And this should be the sampler. Perfect. And you can get there just by clicking, double clicking on the picture of the rack itself right here. And I'm going to delete this track and then hop over to the block section. Now this is the intro. It says double click to edit the block. I don't need to know that. So I'm going to get rid of it now because I know how to do it. And I can change the color of this to whatever color I want. Hop into the verse. Change the color here. Hop into the bridge. Change the color here. Hop into the course. Change the color here. Alt verse. Change it to the color, whatever color I want. Block six, I'm gonna add an outro. Pick a color, any color. All right, now this is how I sequence my, my beats. This is how I tell the difference. I just lay it out once I'm done with my patterns and go from there. So that's how you do that. I also did a video on that, how to make song markers. There's a few different ways to do it. This isn't the only way. You could check that out also. The last thing I do is set a tempo that I want all my beats to start at. This is at 120, whatever. Um, I'm gonna move it up to 150. You can set yours wherever you like. Also turn on cue record and I put it on one eighth. I guess I said that was the last thing I lied. 
I right click on edit automation on the master knob so that I can create an automatic fade. Here we see this automation here. If you would like to know how to automate tempo, you can also check out a video I did on that. So we see the, the default number is at 734. Probably not going to get there just by clicking. So I'm going to drag it in 734. Perfect. Grab my mouse tool. Command E to edit. And let's actually zoom into this. Then I'm going to create my fade. And you can make this as long as you want or as gradual as you want. Whoops. Going to zoom out. And drag it somewhere along the lines of over here. And move my end button a little bit closer. Going to hold down. Shift and click. And once I sequence my song, everything is set up for that. So I think that covers everything with my template from top to bottom. Uh, if anything is different, there'll probably be like different colors from what's in my actual template right now. But this is how it's set up. Um, if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a like comment subscribe most definitely let me know what you would like to see next check out the supplementary videos that i talked about earlier if you ask me a question about those i'll probably just lead you to those videos anyway so yeah kick back and cook up it's all culture